What's up guys, today I'm bringing you a Magic of the Gathering, or Magic 2012 video, and today we're going to be covering a deck, and it's probably considered the worst deck in the game, I don't know, but it's it's good. It's a good matchup for some decks, and uh, I saw they go over it, or whatever, for anybody that plays and like wants to know what to put in their deck, and I think this works pretty well. Uh, Strength of Stone, it's like the first deck you unlock, um, it's it's like a lot of people don't like it and I don't really like it too much like if you're playing against a lot of stuff don't use it because you're gonna lose but um uh, it works really good against like elves and a couple others alright so first card Dark Soul Axe, one cost it's indestructible and equip creature gets plus two plus zero and it equips for two um pretty much just equip card to make your creatures better this is a one drop mountain walk one one it's a good uh, early like uh card and seeing there's lots of mountains in this game uh, it's a pretty good card to uh, play against people that are using mountains uh, Spike Shot Elder it's a uh, one cost and then um, if you pay three mana two of them being mountains Spike Shot Elder deals damage equal to or damage equal to its power to target creature or player so if you combine that with like Dark Steel Axe um, Spike Shot Elder becomes a 3-1 and then you can tap three mana and deal uh, three damage to anything you want Fall line, you tap two mountains and X. Uh, fall line deals X damage to each creature without without flying and each player, and it's an instant. Um, when you're playing elves, this thing wrecks. Like um, if you play like a spinning earth on their heedless one, and then all their stuff is like uh, three defense or less, then you can just like hit this with five mana, kill out their whole side, and swing in. Spinning Earth. Spinning Earth deals damage equal to target creature equal to the number of mounds you control. It's a good it's a good kill card. Um, usually does enough damage to kill pretty much everything. Volcanic Strength. It's a it's a enchantment. It's a two cost. Chain creature gets two two and Mountain Walk. Um, and the Mountain Walk doesn't really have anything to do. I wish this was more like a. I wish this was like Goblin War Paint or something instead and gave stuff haste. But you know the Mountain Walk sometimes helps. Active Treason is a 3 cost, gain control of target creature until end of turn, untap that creature, it gains haste until the end of the turn. Uh, it can be an I win card, for instance if the whole game they don't have any answers for you and then they finally get out something but big like let's say Worm Coil Engine and then you think you're kind of fucked. It's like, oh Active Treason and then you just swing with your whole side and you win. Uh, Claws of Valakut, 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 I don't know. Um, it's a three cost enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus one, plus zero for each mountain you control, and his first strike. This thing goes, this this thing goes fucking nuts if you put on Spike Shot Elder. You get this on it. Spike Shot Elder can be like a six one with first strike, and you can just keep tapping mountains and dealing six damage. It's it's fucking crazy. Um, cost courier three cost uh, forest walk two three. Um, it's a pretty good card. It's, I mean. It's similar to the uh, Nissus Chosen in the Elf deck, except that's Forest Walk. Uh, pretty much, I don't know, it's just a cheap cost, high defense card, I guess. Molten Ravager, this thing can wall your fucking opponent's side, and it gets pumped with mountains. Zero Four 4 can get pumped, and uh, good card. Rockside Elemental, <laughs> these things always get killed as soon as they come into play, because they're just amazing. Three cost one one first strike. Uh, whenever another creature dies, you dies. You put a one one counter on Rockslide Elemental. This thing goes nuts against the Elf deck. You you get this thing up to a three three normal, and then you fault line their entire side of like uh, Elf tokens. Like I did that, and this thing was like a three three. I fault line for two, and this thing got boosted up like a fifteen fifteen in one turn. This card is uh, it's pretty weird. It's a four cost. Target opponent reveals the top card of his his or her library. So Rebel Eruption deals combat damage equal to the revealed card's converted mana cost of the player and each creature he or she controls. If a land card, then you return this to your hand, but the mana stays tapped. Basically, what this is is uh, let's say they have a bunch of two twos or one twos or three twos or you know whatever. You can play this card, and let's say they have like a Worm Coil Engine on the top of their deck. It clears their entire side, guaranteed. Uh, or deals 6 damage to all of, all of them, and I'm pretty sure if you're using Machinations, you don't have much that's larger than, uh, that's more than 6 unless you got a Steel Overseer out. Uh, this is, it's, it's a bit of a risk, but it pays off a lot. This card, it's a 4 cost Battle Cry Haste, and it can't be blocked with creatures 1 or less. Or, no, creatures with power 1 or less can't block at all this turn. 
So basically, if you just have a bunch of like tokens out or whatever, you can, you're pretty much screwed because you can get in with everything. Uh, Lava Born Muse, it's a 4 cost 3-3, three, three, and at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that player has two or fewer cards in hand, Lava Born Muse deals 3 damage to him, or this is a pretty good card. Um, usually when you get it out, people usually only have two, or 3 or 2 cards in their hand, so it usually works out pretty well. Earth Elemental, it's just a 5 cost 4-5, no abilities, no nothing, but it's a still pretty good card. Uh, it goes kind of with the whole idea of this deck when high defense and, you know, whatever. This card goes fucking nuts. 5 cost, 4-4, four, four, and you can tap 2 mountains and target creature gets plus 1, minus 1 until end of the turn. You can use this to kill your opponent's creatures by tapping 4 mana and killing something with 2 strength, or you can use it on your own creatures and bring them down to 1, and then you can boost them up like 3 uh, power. It's a pretty uh, amazing card. This is a uh, Red Corrupt without the lifelink or whatever. Deals damage equal to the creature or player equal to the number of mountains you control. It's, uh, it can win you games, kill really big shit. Tephroderm, walls, sides, it's a 5 cost, 4 or 5. Whenever a creature deals damage to Tephroderm, Tephroderm deals that much damage to a creature. So let's say he swings with like a 9-9 nine, nine. against Tephroderm, you block with this guy, the 9-9 nine, nine dies. It's kind of like death touch. Unless uh, it has more defense than it does power. Whenever a spell deals damage to Tephroderm, Tephroderm deals that much damage to a spell's controller. So let's say you're playing Chandra, she tries to use like an incinerate on this shit. It uh, brings him down to a 4-2, but it also deals 3 damage back to her. Conquer Manticore is a 6 cost, flying 5-5, five, five, with active treason built into its ability. Uh, when it uh, comes into play, gain control of target creature and opponent controls until end of turn. Untap that creature against haste until end of turn. Um, it's a really good card. This is another 6 cost, uh, Earth Servant gets plus 0, plus 1 for each amount you control. It's basically a 4-10, it's just listed as a 4-4, four, because four. Uh, whenever you, this comes into play, it's always a 4-10, because you have 6 mounts when you play it. Uh, th this thing just this thing just wrecks. I mean, uh, it's mo nothing else you can say, like, it can't die. Um, now we're going to the cards that I took out, and I'll explain why. Okay, um, first card, Assault Strobe. One cost, target creature gains double strike until end of turn. It's a sorcery. Uh, almost never comes in handy. There's no, f there's no like unblockables. There's no flyers. Unless you count the forest walk and the mountain walk, it's not too useful because they'll just block whatever you use this on. Um, life gaining card is just not good. Golden Bird is the best out of all of them, I have to say, because you don't actually have to play a spell to get the counters, but I still take them out. Uh, Grim Lava Mancer, exile two cards from your graveyard. Grim Lava Mancer deals two damage to target creature or player, and it's a one cost one one. Uh, I just take this out because you don't really get a lot of cards in your graveyard in this game. You can only use this ability if you're lucky three times a game, and uh, it's just not really worth it. This Rock Heart Stroker, three cost two two. When it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. Usually doesn't help too much because if you swing with whatever, it usually just gets blocked and dies, or just gets blocked and whatever. Yeah, you they lose a creature, but it, I don't think it's worth it for three. Uh, this guy four cost three three. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact. This card is only worthwhile if you're playing machinations or the white deck, and the majority of the time, I guess you're not, seeing as how there's more decks that don't have artifacts. Um, it's just not worth it for a three three. This card is fucking garbage. Four cost for a 3-2. It has haste, but haste is not worth that much. Like, they're like, like a 3-2 with haste for three, maybe. Like, that'd be doable. But a 3-2 haste for, like, no, it's just stupid. This is the bad card. Earth Elemental, I only took out, I took out one of them because I needed to take out something. And this just seemed, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just vanilla. Nothing, no abilities or anything, so I took one out. This card is garbage. It's a 5 cost 3-3 three, three flyer. And when it dies, it deals 3 damage to each creature and each player, including you. So when this when this bitch dies, if you have any 3 defense, they all die, and you take 3 damage. I mean, you can tap 5 and put it back in your hand, but, I mean, this is like the only flyer in the deck, too, besides a couple of other cards, but, like, it, it's too, like, self-inflicting to, to like it. Uh, Flameborn Hellion is a 6 cost, 5 for haste, and it has to attack each turn, like, you don't have a choice, like, it automatically attacks, so that's just bad, because if they have something that can block it, which they probably will by turn, uh, 6, then, you know, it, uh, it's just a bad card, because you have to attack, if it, if you didn't have to attack, it'd be, a, it'd be decent. 
this card, I, I can't even talk about this card. It's an 8 cost 6-6, six, six, and you can sacrifice it and tap one mountain, and it deals 6 damage to each creature and player. And what that means is it deals 6 damage to each of your creatures and each of their creatures, so it clears both your sides pretty much, and it deals 6 damage to you and 6 damage to them. And I guess if you get them down to low enough health and you're at like 8 and they're at 6, and you sack this guy, you win the game, but it's not worth it for 8. I mean... This guy's only a 6 and he's a 4-10, and this guy's a 6 cost and he's a 5-5 five, five flyer, and this guy's a 6-6 six, six for 8. That just seems pretty ridiculous. Um, this is my deck guide for Strength of Stone. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like rating. Uh, if you guys want to see more of these, then let me know. Um, I guess, uh, peace out. Talk to you guys next time.